Wentworth, just southwest of London, is where the PGA European Tour have their headquarters, and it uh, is also an historic golfing venue. The preliminary to the Ryder Cup was staged here in 1926. The Curtis Cup match was started here, and the club has also played host to the World Cup of Golf. Every year, the Volvo PGA Championship is played over the West Coast, and uh, for the last 32 years, the Toyota World Match Play Championship. Last year, Ernie Els of South Africa, helped by that putt at the 15th, beat Colin Montgomery by four and two. And Els is back again to defend the title in 1995, hoping to become the fourth player to successfully do so. This the draw for the first round. No Nick Faldo or Ian Woosnam this year, but some great matches in prospect. Sam Torrance against Bernard Langer. Colin Montgomery, who's been European number one for the last two years against uh, the young American. David Duval. The course, heathland, tree-lined, majestic in the autumn, 6,957 yards and a tough par 72, playing longer in the autumn than it does in the early summer. Katsuyoshi Tomori was the Japanese representative in the 12-man field, although he managed to hold this putt against Lee Jansen and was one up twice early on. Jansen was three up by the luncheon break and five up by the 27th, helped by this approach shot at the 24th hole of the match, the sixth, the par four. When Jansen went on to win the 10th and the 12th in the afternoon, he was through by seven and six to meet Els in the quarterfinals. One of the most interesting of the first round ties was the one between the two Europeans, Torrance and Langer, Peter Oosterhuis. Yes, Renton, both of them having won three times in Europe, Langer winning the PGA over the west course at Wentworth. It was always going to be a battle. Langer out in 31 in the morning. Took the early lead, was six up after 16 holes, lost the 17th and 18th in the morning, but won three of the first five in the afternoon. And went on to win quite comfortably, five and four. Langer threw to a quarter-final tie against the world number two, Nick Price. Colin Montgomery's opponent was the young American David Duval, 24 years old, and uh, winner already this season of $800,000 on the US tour. There had been a two-hour delay because of mist, but the delay in the start didn't affect Montgomery. He was quickly into his stride. Five up on Duval, round in 66 at the lunch break. Still five up with nine to play. And although Duval had a couple of birdies and an eagle, at the 12th, and uh, Montgomery did bogey a couple of holes. He did enough to get through on the 36th and qualify for a match against Steve Elkington the next day. And a tough first round match for Costantino Rocca. BJ Singh, twice a winner in the United States this year, winning in Phoenix and in Westchester, New York. Plays well wherever he travels to, plays all around the world. But Rocca on this day shot 65 in the morning, was three up, exceptional play. He was still two up through eight holes in the afternoon. He birdied the ninth and tenth. And then this solid iron shot into the twelfth in the afternoon round. Kept him at four up. He went on to win four and three. Good solid iron play, the foundation for his win. Rocker through to meet Ben Crenshaw, the Masters champion, in the quarterfinals. So there are the first round results. Jansen seven and six, Langer five and four, Colin Montgomery winning on the last, and Rocker by four and three. No delays on day two, although it was still pretty misty. It's Lee Jansen here, playing his second shot to the 16th in the morning against Ernie Els. Made a birdie, but it was the only hole he won in the morning round. Els round in 64, out in 32, eight birdies, no bogeys, and Els five up. In 1994, Els had beaten Jose Maria Olathabal, Severiano Ballesteros, and in the final column Montgomery. And although Jansen hold that putt there, he really had no answer to the power play and the precision ironwork of the 25-year-old South African. Not been a great year for Ernie. Not after last year when he won well over two million dollars in prize money. But he loves Wentworth. And even when Jansen threw an eagle at him at the 12th hole, he came back at the 13th in the afternoon with this raking putt across the green. That put him five up again, and he went on to win by four and three.
Nick Price, the world number two, against Bernard Langer, the world number three. Plenty of exciting golf expected from this match. Nick Price, two up after 16, but Langer rallied before lunch. This his third shot to the 17th, the pin well back. A brilliant shot from the German, who has never won the title, but has twice lost in finals to Severiano Ballesteros. He won the 17th and the 18th to square the match and was never down in the afternoon. It went all the way, but Bernard Langer winning through by one hole against the Zimbabwean Nick Price. Colin Montgomery playing Steve Elkington, a replay of their playoff for the US PGA Championship. Colin did make this long putt, but problems with his putting just before lunch. Put him two down against Elkington. And at the 13th in the afternoon, Monty had a 20-footer for a birdie. Thought he was going to win the hole, but Elkington chipped in, regained a two-up lead, and went on to win three and one. Ben Crenshaw, the Masters champion, wasn't 100% fit. Cosatino Rocca, his opponent, round in 67 to Crenshaw's 74 in the morning and seven up, and then moving eight up by winning the 20th with a birdie. But Crenshaw won five of the next eight holes, rallied, but in the end, Peter Rocca just too strong for Crenshaw. This second shot to the 12th in the afternoon, a relief for Rocca. Crenshaw barely missed an eagle try. Rocca tapped it in and went on to win three and two. So on day two, these are the results. L through by four and three against Jansen. Langer winning on the last against Price. Elkington two and one against Montgomery and Rocker three and two against Ben Crenshaw. The defending champion still alive. And by the end of day two, all three American challengers out. Welcome back to Wentworth, venue for the last 32 years of the Toyota World Match Play Championship. Semi-finals day in the Ernie Ells of South Africa, the defending champion, in against Bernard Langer. Steve Elkington, the US PGA champion, playing Costantina Rocca. Well, we know how much Ernie Ells enjoys playing around the West Course. Not only did he win the Match Play Championship last year, he very nearly won the Volvo PGA Championship as well, just pipped in the closing holes by Jose Maria Olafabo. He's got the power and the strength to cope with uh, the Wentworth rough, but his opponent, Bernard Langer, is well noted for his precision play. Well, that was precise enough, but just look what happens to the ball. That pin position, a tricky one on the second. Still, an interesting clash of personalities and of styles. And a very stylish player, Steve Elkington, sometimes criticized for poor putting, but certainly not the case at the US PGA Championship at Riviera and not the case here at Wentworth. Brushing that in for an eagle. Costantino Rocca, very solid play in Europe in 95. Five second place finishes and confidence from the Ryder Cup, but here in trouble at the 10th. Yes, heading to go two down in that match. It had been tight in the other semi-final. Ells had been one up at the luncheon break. But by the 14th, Ells and Langer all square. And after 13 holes, Elkington two up on Rocker. Rocker having lost that 10th hole in the afternoon. And we join the action with Steve Elkington at the short 14th. An unusual pin placement on the front of the green of the 14th. It's a two-level green, played quite sharply uphill. And playing only just over 160 yards today, 179 on the card, seven irons and six irons, just catching the front of the green. Dangerous to come so close to the front fringe, it can roll straight back down that slope that you can see short of the green. Now, Rocker. to make a move and that's better than his swing at the 10th the previous par three just sneaking 
onto the front fringe, but a good angle from where to putt. That's a bad weather in the past at uh, the World Match Play Championship, but this week the weather absolutely superb. Apart from the mist, hardly a breath of wind and no rain to trouble the players. Bernard Langer, second shot to 15. This is the 33rd hole of the match. Langer hanging in there when one might have expected him to tie up. Bird is at the 11th, 12th and 13th. Only the 13th provided a win. And that's a super second shot over the right-hand bunker into the 15th. Ernie, his drive hit the crowd. Fortunate to bounce back just enough so he didn't have to curve this second shot around the trees. It really was a lucky break for him. But taking full advantage of uh, his slice of luck. And he too will be like Langer putting for a three. So Elkington to putt first at the 14th. Very precise routine on his putting these days. And he's made a lot of confident, solid strokes this week. That one just a little short. The putt conceded. Graham Marsh, David Graham, and Greg Norman on three occasions, previous Australian winners of this title. Rock out the first Italian to play in the event since it started way back in 1964. Slightly uphill, not much break. And just firm enough. A birdie two. Now just one down. Steve Elkington, one up. And four tough holes to come, uh, 15, 16, 17 and 18, a good finish here around the west course. Well, Bernard Langer's putt here will move quite dramatically, Peter, from left to right. A lot of slope on the 15th. It's given players trouble over the years, both in the Match Play Championship and in the Volvo PGA Championship. Has to get the speed and direction absolutely right. Beautifully hold. He knew it. Four birdies in the six holes from the turn. Now Ernie has a putt to remain all square. What a month it's been for Langer. Played in the Ryder Cup, the winning European Ryder Cup team. Came to Ireland and won the Smurfit European Open. Second to Anders Forsbrand in the Mercedes German Masters. And now playing Ernie Els and having a great match here at Wentworth. Just had to be hit firmly, and it wasn't enough. So, Bernard Langer, one up with three regulation holes to go on the defending champion, Ernie Els. Steve Elkington, one up on Rocker, with four to play. Of course, these games can go into extra holes if it's all squared after 36. At the 15th, Rocker. Pulled his tee shot, but managed to miss the fairway bunker. Guarding the left side of the fairway, didn't quite reach the trees, and now a very good angle into the green. With the green sloping right to left. Comfortable place to play from. And he's got the same putt that Ernie had up the hill, breaking right to left. Playing with so much more confidence now, he really does look as if he believes he is a good player. He admitted after the Ryder Cup uh, that he now thought of himself as one of the top players, which everybody else already knew. Elkington's second shot at the 15th, and he's hit a few wayward ones. He's played some brilliant chips at the 8th, the 9th, and the 13th out of a bunker, all to save pars, and now he'll have to do it again. So pretty calm, cool competitor. Colin Montgomery had to birdie the last three holes at Riviera to catch him and force uh, a playoff. 16, Bernard Langer. Teeing up on the left side to allow himself more room to hit a draw. Aiming at the right side of the fairway, trying to turn it right to left and using the driver. His caddy, Peter Coleman, urging the ball to turn right to left. And that's at the 15th. Just one bunker guarding the left side of the fairway. That's been a tremendous.
tremendous partnership over the years, Coleman and Langer. Well, now a tricky little shot for Steve Elkington back on 15. Quite a tight line where the gallery's been standing, but uphill and just a superb shot. Won't be required to putt that, that's a par four. Rocker with a chance for a birdie to win the hole. And square the match. Well, we know the line of this putt <laughs> because we saw Ernie Els have that putt just a moment or two ago as he plays his second shot to 16. And an excellent shot. Attacking that back pin placement is very difficult. The ground drops away behind the green and Ernie cleverly used an iron off the tee, playing his second shot prior to Langer into the 16th green, so a little pressure on Langer. 25 years old, but far more mature in terms of course management and, uh, well, professional golf in general. Nell's adopting a strategy that Ben Hogan was known for, wanting to hit the second shot in first in a match play situation. And it's had its effect on Langer. Well, not one of Langer's best, and uh, we've watched him peppering the stick all season. En route to winning the Volvo PGA Championship here at Wentworth, the Deutsche Bank in Hamburg, and the, that Smurfit European Open at the Kildare Country Club in Dublin. Has to be hit firmly. There's a lot of slope on the 15th. Slippery from the other side, and quite slow from the left. <laughs> he missed an opportunity. Langer for a birdie. At 16, the 34th hole of the match. And a very unusual pin placement. It's not used very often. Green perhaps a little slower around this cup than what the players have been used to throughout the rest of the course. Now, uphill, it really was an exceptional second shot from Ernie. I thought about it for a moment, but fell in by the side door, and it's all square. Two to play. The defending champion wins that with a birdie three. Just two holes to play, both par fives, and Ernie Earl's extra length may just give him the advantage over Langer in the closing stretch. All square there. Elkington one up on Rocker. Rocker annoyed not to be all square after missing that birdie chance. A difficult birdie chance at 15. And Steve Elkington protecting his lead, using an iron off the tee at the 16th. That's a common practice in dry conditions. In the damp of the autumn, most players using three woods and drivers. But he's well positioned below the cup, a similar putt to that of Els. And Elkington played an iron off the tee for good reason. He'd already seen Rocker hook a three wood. And after a drop from that little post, that's an immovable obstruction. Rocker has a chance to reach the green. A low hook, tough to judge the distance on this. He's played a beautiful shot. With a tricky chip coming back. Good recovery though. And just as well that Rocker wasn't further over to the left there because it's uh, jungle territory in there. 17th, Bernard Langer. Up and over the hill and down to the left. And that one has gone left and uh, is still well short of the green. Trying to hit a long, low hook, overdid it a bit, and a huge advantage for Els. Just a three iron to the green in the morning and was disappointed not to make a birdie. Great drive, just running off the edge of the fairway. The slope of the fairway always kicks the drives to the right. Still able to go for the green in two with an iron. And perhaps unlucky to get caught up in that short rough up the left side. He doesn't know that it caught up in the rough. He thinks he's on the green. Back to 16. Rocker with his little chip and run from through the green. Oh, 
It was a tricky one. Pitching into a slope and then downhill once he got closer to the pin. So good enough for a par after that wayward tee shot. Although he might have to putt out. Not quite close enough for a concession. All right, Elkington. With a putt to go two up with two regulation holes to go. Well, you know, he may have had uh, the reputation of not being too strong a putter in the past, but uh, at Riviera and here at Wentworth, he's holding them when it matters. Advantage to Ells at the 17th. Langer, a full wedge out of the rough. Ells, a short chip shot to come. So a chance for a four. And there, it looks a bit closer from that angle. <laughs> a good shot from where he was. Interesting. If uh, a week earlier, Langer had finished first in the Mercedes German Masters, not second to Anders Forsbrand, he would have been seeded into the quarterfinals and wouldn't have had to play on the Thursday. It would have been less taxing for him. Now, Ernie. Ernie Els, I must say, I like his delicate touch around the greens. That maybe wasn't one of his better ones, but I remember last year in the 1994 final, he broke the heart of uh, Seve Ballesteros, who is himself the king around the greens. Marvellous performance. Langer for four. Took the butter back a little bit on the inside, looped it around. That's a par five. And now a big opportunity for Ernie. Has played only one tournament in the last six weeks, who has come into this World Match Play Championship reasonably fresh. Yeah. Wasn't going anywhere else but right in the middle of the hole. Ells one up on Langer, one to play. So two great birdies there by Ells at 16 and 17, turning that one around. Ells one up, one to play. Elkington two up, two to play on Rock. The green is tucked around the corner. Trying to turn the ball right to left. Earlier in the week he hit a beautiful shot, a low raking three wood that ran for miles. Put it on the green from 285 yards, but this one, not able to get the draw on the ball. But plenty of room for his pitch shot. Dave Rennick, his Scottish caddy, used to work for Jose Maria Olathabel. The camera tower behind the green. Not in view for Rocker, so he certainly has to turn this one quite a lot. Trying to hook it with the ball below your feet. That's always tricky. And he's done quite well, leaving himself a chip and run. Ahead to 18, and he else finding the bunker off the tee. And a bit of a surprise because uh, he was in the bunker in the morning. Yes, he was, and put it on the front of the green and was able to two putt for a birdie. This time, just caught the sand before the ball. Turned the club face, took distance off the shot, and now an awkward pitch shot from thick rough. Bernard Langer already just uh, on the front edge of the green in two, so Langer in with a chance perhaps of squaring the match and taking it to extra holes. Back to 17. The 35th hole of this second semi final. And a very good shot from Elkington. Able to loft the ball enough to stop it. Couldn't get any spin out of the thick rough. Allowed the ball to roll back to the pin and a chance for the birdie four. So and remember, he only needs a half to win the match. Oh, no. Not bit. one of Rocker's better shots. Too short a backswing for the length of shot he was playing. Reminding us of that little wedge shot he played at St Andrews uh, at the final hole. Because he then went on to hold the putt and get into a playoff with John Daly. 
the eventual winner. Forward to 18 again. He's so strong, Ernie. He's like Sandy Lyle, isn't he? He had a good lie in that rough. And with the soft conditions, he was able to stop the ball quickly, even from the rough. Couldn't have done that in May at the Volvo PGA. This putt has got to drop. And I gave it a chance, but it means that uh, Steve Elkington now has two putts to win from 10 feet. Three wood second shot for Langer, just on the front edge and going conventional style. He does this on very long putts. This one more than 90 feet. And once it started going left, it just kept going and going and going. So this hole very much in the balance. And at least the putt he's left himself with is an uphill putt. But uh, Steve Elkington here with the luxury of uh, two putts to win. He only needs the half. And uh, Rocker can't do any better than five. That was for four, and well, one putt does. So Steve Elkington, the US PGA champion, gets through to his first Toyota World Match Play final. Who will he play, Els or Langer? Well, if Els holds this putt, it's Annie in the final. A little right to left. Just through the break, just a bit too firm to take the break. That's conceded a five for Ernie. Langer now has to make this to square the match and go to the 37th hole. He's held a lot of good putts on this green in the past. <sighs> Not this time. Failing with his uh, buddy putt there and Ernie Ells of South Africa, the former US Open champion, wins on the last by one hole. So the 1995 Toyota World Match Play Championship at Wentworth, South Africa against Australia. Ells against Elkington. Welcome back. Gary Player, Hale Irwin and Severiano Ballesteros on two occasions have successfully defended the World Match Play title. Can Ernie Els do the same in 1995? His opponent, Steve Elkington, was up early on. But playing uh, this third shot to the 12th, Els has moved two ahead. Two holes up and uh, will quickly move three ahead. But at the 16th, well, in a lot of trouble off the tee. Elkington had been in the trees at the 15th. And then Ernie with a three wood off the tee at the 16th, well into the bushes, couldn't even get it back to the fairway, ended up conceding that hole. Here at the 17th, this is Ernie's provisional ball. He's already hit one out of bounds. That's going left too. Headed the same direction. It's amazing how many top players have ended in that person's garden. But that one has come back out again. But Ernie will take six. And Elkington, with a par five, wins another hole. A ragged finish uh, to this morning round by Ernie Els, in contrast to Elkington. This was a putt he had at 14. Yeah. Well, there he was in the trees at 15, winning 16 and 17. But at the last, Ernie Els pitching and putting for a four, a winning four, to launch two up on the Australian. So to the afternoon round and early problems for Elkington, bunkered at the first. The 19th hole of the match. And the left-hand bunker set below the green. It's a difficult recovery, but Elkington plays it very well. And gets a half. The second, the 20th hole. With the toughest pin placement on this green, tucked behind that right-hand bunker. Ernie determined to make a fast start to this afternoon round, and uh, what a great shot. Superb shot, carrying over the bunker, barely missing the tree. Three up, Ernie Els, but in trouble at the third, the 21st. And overcorrecting his hook problem, all those wild shots to the left to finish the morning round, here blocked well to the right at the third, and lucky to have quite a clear shot. Trying to shoot it up the hill. 
good recovery, but a tricky pitch shot. A three-tier green here at the third. That was very popular with uh, the British fans. They don't know Elkington quite so well, but have been impressed by his play, but maybe not by that shot. And that's very wild from good position on the fairway. Left side of the fairway with a right-hand pin placement. He should have been able to do better than that, and a very difficult pitch coming up for Elkington. Els will be first to go. This was the hole that, uh, before it was redesigned, Tom Kite had such nightmares with. He never could get the ball up to the pin. In one round of the world match play, had three or four attempts at it, but that's a great shot by Annie. Certainly required a good touch to hit the right slope between the tiers. And look at this ball above his feet. That complicates things even more. Means he can't hit the soft light he needs to stop it. And this hole has been the toughest throughout the history of the World Match Play Championship. Always a long uphill par four with that very severe tear in the green up until a few years ago. 1991, the green changed. For the better. It's still a challenge, <laughs> but uh, perhaps fairer than the original severe slope. Elkington for his par. Started on a good line, but not hard enough. A bogey five, a chance for Ernie to go four up. When he was wildly to the right in the trees and Elkington on the fairway, we didn't expect this to be the situation up on the green. Typical match play, isn't it? Greens are perfect, and he struck it well. He knew it was in instantly. Chris Kennedy and his green-keeping staff have done a marvellous job in getting Wentworth into such marvellous condition for this event this year. The fourth is a par five down the hill on the second shot over a little valley. And we go from the toughest hole on the course relative to par to the easiest, playing downhill, 500 yards. Pretty simple for these players. Elkington, not a long drive. A three-wood second shot. Ernie, perfect drive and a five-iron. That's where his length gives him such an advantage. Always the same rhythmical swing. Rather like Colin Montgomery. Different style of first swing, but always the same rhythm. Great shot, attacking that pin tucked behind the bunker. Glorious weather. Been a great week. So advantage to Els. Elkington long downhill putt for his eagle. And just coaxing it down there. That green is very fast. A very good putt. Difficult to judge. The four conceded, and the Els has the chance to move five up. This for an eagle three. This to win the hole. Gave that a charge. Certainly uphill, but he ripped it by. And now an awkward one coming back. Tense. Even for the spectators. Well, now, what a surprise. Elkington wins the hole in four. Els, three up. Els losing a hole. He looked like winning. On to the fifth. The second of the par three holes on the west course at Wentworth, designed 70 years ago by Harry Colt. And not changed a great deal in that time. And a delightful contrast, four very different par threes. This one just over 190 yards. And an unusual pin placement on the front. Tricky pins are back right, back left. So Elkington in the bunker. Got to put the pressure on Ernie. Ernie be very upset three putting that fourth hole from so close. Teeing up on the left, trying to give himself a better angle into the short right pin placement. Bunker. And with just a six iron, not a good shot from either player. 
It's a long haul, a psychological struggle as well as a physical battle. And only just a little untidy at this stage. From the downhill line, he got the good trajectory, but not quite the spin he wanted. A much easier bunker shot for Steve Elkington. Then he had to carry over most of the bunker. You know, just a routine splash shot. Slips the club underneath. Well done. That putt conceded. Elkington has his three. And Ells putting for three. It's for a half. Just to stay three up. And once again, missing on the right-hand side. Elkington wins the hole in three. Els two up. So, Els losing two holes in a row. Previous winners, Corey Pavin in 1993, the first American to win since Bill Rogers back in 1979. In 1991, Seve Ballesteros, his fifth win, equaling Gary Player's record. Great winners of this fine championship. And he in trouble off the tee again, this time at the seventh. And with a tough pin placement, this is a very awkward second. And a long putt with a tricky slope to judge. The sixth was halved in par. The sixth, the 24th hole of this 36 hole final. This is the 25th hole. A downhill tee shot here at the seventh, then an uphill second. Steep slope between front and back portions of the green, and Elkington just catching the fringe, able to stop the ball quickly. An awkward two-putt coming up for Ernie, and perhaps a chance for a three for Elkington. A severe slope, cutting through the middle of this green, not quite as steep as the one we talked about back at the third, but this difficult part left to right then right to left and Ernie perhaps getting the line right but not the distance a subdued final I think uh, when we compare it with the Ryder Cup of just a few weeks ago when the intensity of the competition was so high this uh, seems much more calm but just as tense both players going about their business, playing at a brisk pace. And a good putt from Malcolmton just catches the edge of the hole. That's a birdie three. Ernie could possibly have gone five up with his eagle putt at the fourth. Now he's only one up. He's lost three of the last four holes. £170,000 to the winner. That compares with 5000 when Arnold Palmer won back in 1964 in the inaugural World Match Play Championship. The eighth. Both players used arms off the tee, playing for position. And that's a wild one from Elkington. That could be in the water. The lake in front of the green extends into a little stream up the left-hand side. He might have been lucky, but uh, we we'll just need to wait and see. And the Ls. If he pops this one on the green, he could get two up again. a little worried ever since that three putt at the fourth has been a little more tense than usual and Elkington was fortunate not to be in the water but an awkward pitch uphill lie you can't see the green coming over that ridge I'm trying to pop it up too much grass got between the ball and the club face so things looking very good for Ernie. Always a battery of cameramen around. Not so many Japanese cameramen here this year. Tomori, of course, went out in round one. Elkington for four. He made a critical putt here in his match against Rocker. Can't do it today. So Ernie else has two putts to go two up again.
<laughs> Taking both of them. Very pots. commercial. <laughs> That's what he needed to do. That's conceded. So after 26 holes of the 36-hole final, the South African Ernie Els two up on Steve Elkington. Welcome back. After 26 holes of the final of the Toyota Waddle Match Play Championship, Ernie Els of South Africa, two up on Steve Elkington of Australia. At the 27th hole, the ninth, Ernie in trouble off the tee, had to play this delicate shot up onto the green. Not a very good one, but he held the putt and did make his half there. But he did have a chance at the 13th hole, the 31st hole of the match, to go three up. It's for a buddy. Not to be. Hole half in four. Els remains two up. Els has had to make that good save at nine to stay two up. Elkington had had to hole a putt at the short tenth to get a half after missing the green. Having put his second shot from the fairway into the bunker at 11, he had to hold that putt to half the hole. So Elkington under a bit of pressure. As we rejoin the action with L still two up, playing the short 14th. And a more conventional pin placement on this final day. On the front for the semi-finals. Now well back. Both players through the green in the morning round. And that's better judgment of distance by Ernie. So not giving anything away. Two up with five to play. Puts it on the green and a par three, very important. This green also divided in two, front portion and back level. Six arm for Elkington and calling to it to get up. He knows this will happen if he's short. And rolling further and further away and a very unlikely birdie putt from there. Difficult coming up the slope and then flattening out on top. Some idea of how much uphill this 14th hole is. As the photographers maneuver into position, has hit it firmly up the slope. Good line until the last couple of feet. So no birdie for Elkington. Still he should make his par, but the chance for Els to win the hole and go three up. It's very fast down there. He's taken a good run at it. Well, that's the mistake he made at the fourth. Getting a little too aggressive, but this is a very simple return putt. The one at the fourth was downhill. Hit it firmly, right centre, bang, very solid. So a half and three at the 14th, the 32nd hole. Meanwhile, Costantino Rocca has beaten Bernhard Langer by two and one in the battle for third and fourth places in this year's championship. That was a good uh, old struggle too. Well, four holes to play and Ernie Els, the defending champion, has a two hole lead. And significantly using an iron off the tee at the 15th, a two iron off the tee, a five iron second shot. Saying to himself, just keep the ball in play, make some pars, and force Elkington to make a move. Good match play strategy. Elkington three wood off the tee. No problem with the trees on the right, but a little uphill lie there. Tough to control it from there. So it appears that Ernie's in control. Two up. And with the shorter birdie putt here at 15. Els played five, one five. Well, that's one way to do your jogging. And you see that black dog looks a bit tired.
Well, we saw Bernhard Langer in an earlier match holding from up here and, uh, well, Elkington coming very close to doing the same from longer range. Good putt there, but no birdie. And really, Peter, he needs birdies now. That's what Ernie is saying to himself when he uses an iron off the tee. Just find the fairway, don't do anything silly. And wait and see if Elkington can manage to scrape a birdie out of one of these closing holes. Well, they've halved all the holes since uh, the eighth. Can Ernie win this one? Oh, it was close. And a rock solid par four. <laughs> Protects his lead. He is working very hard at keeping himself calm and laid back and relaxed. He's been frustrated ever since the fourth hole. He's been frustrated. He had birdie chances. Number six and number 11. And he's noticeably frustrated, muttering to himself. But two up at this stage. And some uh, careful play off the tee. He should be able to protect that. Well, two up and three to play. And it was here that he had trouble this morning in the trees. It was a three wood off the tee this morning that got him into trouble. Just like the previous hole, he's going to go with an iron, keep it in play. And he has to be careful about that left bunker. Three woods and drivers can carry over it, but an iron puts it in play. And he's just stayed safely on the left edge of the fairway with the pin front right, a very awkward pin placement. Firing up the left side can help. Steve Elkington with a three wood. He needs to make a birdie. And he's attacking. The three wood just carrying that bunker and he is in perfect position. You could argue that L's best performance this week was in the match against Jansen when he had that 64 in the first round and Elkington's best golf was played against Colin Montgomery. Very deceptive from the fairway. Looks as if it's just over this front bunker. And Ernie's blocked it to the right. But with a good lie, should be a routine splash shot from there. But a chance, a very good chance for Elkington to hit this one close and make a birdie. started it well to the left he did perhaps he was in two minds as to whether to attack or protect a par and hope that Ernie didn't make his par whatever a very wide shot with a wedge from Elkington that's the ball of Ernie Els and there's the shot that he has left himself with here at the 16th the 34th hole of these 36 hole matches and this 36 hole final And in fact, Elkington to putt first, before Ernie's bunker shot. And a steady par, but not what he needed at a hole where he's hitting a wedge for his second. Well, Ernie needs to hold this to win. Up and down to maintain his two-up lead, with just two holes to play. Well, that would give us a very exciting finish. It's an inviting shot, good lie, a little bit of an uphill lie, and enough room for him to manoeuvre. And the ball on the green, come on. Well, he tried, he tried hard to hold it. Didn't quite manage it, didn't do what Jay Haas did in the Ryder Cup in that vital match against Philip Walton. He held a bunker shot at 16 to win the hole at Oak Hill. So Annie Els remains two up with two to play and requires only a half at 17 or 18 to win his second successive Toyota World Match Play Championship. You say only a half, but remember, two drives in the trees in the morning. This is a test of nerve, of confidence. And he's fired it down the left-hand side. He did use a three-wood. And he's hit it a mile with a three-wood. Can still reach the green in two. That's a superb shot considering what he did on the 16th and 17th this morning. <laughs> and there's the relief getting the acknowledgement for overcoming that challenge, standing on that tee 
Having been out of bounds in the morning, that was a superb shot. Good shot too from Steve Elkington. It's difficult to believe that Annie Els just took up the game seriously 10 years ago when he was 14 years old. Could have played tennis or rugby union, but elected to play golf. His grandfather used to take him to the golf course and uh, <coughs> encouraged him to play. And uh, what a good decision he took when he decided to concentrate on the Royal and Ancient game. Stand on the left, please. He certainly seems to have the perfect temperament for the game. That's one of uh, his strong clubs in his bag, if you like, isn't it? Very much so today. During the front nine, muttering to himself a couple of times, that's about as upset as we've ever seen him. The blind second shot to 17. Very difficult shot with the ball quite a bit below his feet this time, trying to turn it right to left. And getting plenty of distance, he's pin high, missing the green to the right. And now... Ernie needs to hit a good straight iron shot, make a birdie, and that would mean that Elkington has to hold his pitch to extend the match. Beautifully positioned off the tee, aiming at the camera tower behind the green. That's set directly behind the centre of the green. He started at a bit right, but the pin's a little right of centre, and what a shot! <laughs> Oh, I thought for a moment it was going to go into the hole for what would have been an albatross too. It missed the pin by just a couple of inches, but uh, a fine shot by Ernie Els. He's on the green, Elkington is off the green. And remember, Els only needing a half to win the £170,000 first prize. Both these players, incidentally, have already qualified for the Johnny Walker World Championship. This World Match Play Championship is also a qualifier for the event being played at trial in Jamaica in December. No. Well, he really needed to hold that, Peter. He did. Ernie, 571 yards with a three wood and a two iron on the green. Two putts for his birdie and already two up. And Elkington will just uh, mark his ball, step to the side and expect Ernie to lag this putt to the edge of the cup. Afternoon sunshine, long shadows, but uh, in a moment or two, I'm sure, delight for Ernie Els as he holds on to the solid silver Toyota World Match Play Championship trophy worth £70,000. Well, that's all he needed to do. A birdie four at the last, giving Ernie Els victory by two and one over Steve Elkinson. He played well. Mike Stewart, the official referee there, congratulating him and the beaten finalist. And, uh, well, when he looks back, this is one shot, uh, Peter, that he will long remember. This beautiful two-iron combined with the tee shot at the 17th, the championship winning shots. What a great shot. And with his victory, Ernie Els moving to world number two behind Greg Norman. And when he returns to Wentworth in 1996, trying to achieve what no one has ever achieved before in this championship, he'll try to hold on to that trophy for a third year running. Congratulations to the 1995 Toyota World Match Play champion, Ernie Els.